Hello everybody, <clears throat> welcome to another video. Uh, it's 4 a.m. in the morning. As you can probably tell, I am uh, sick. <laughs> I'm getting the flu and my throat is super scratchy. So uh, this will not be a very long video. Um, I'm making this video at 4 a.m. because I can't sleep and because I'm upset about the state of everything surrounding gears right now. Um, I'm reading a lot of comments these days, a lot of Twitter feeds with the devs, Reddit posts, YouTube comments, whatever. I mean, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't read those, but I'm sure they're crap. Um, and I want to just, just address where I'm coming from when I make my videos, when I make my streams, when I've made my boot camps, and you name it, is that I've, I've always had mad love for this game. All right, I'm just like you guys. It started back in 2006, 2007. Grew up with the game, loved the game, hated the game, but got through it at the end of the day and kept playing regardless. But I'm 27 now. I started playing this game when I was about 14, 15. And back then, my experiences were way different. Okay, that wasn't as much as we have now in terms of content, right? But at the same time, the things we have today are not really an evolution of what we had back then. Right? When Gears 1 came out, we had the bare bones game with some skins, you know, some characters. And you just went into player matches or rag matches and you just played. Right? You had a leaderboard system. You didn't have any ranked matchmaking that would put this and that person together or whatever. Um, it was all just a random mosh pit, basically. And whoever you play with is whoever you played with. Now, as the game went on, and as I learned more about playing the game, um, I learned about the art of Gears, I guess you could call it. right? The movement, the tactics, the strategy with teams. There is a whole meta that is worth making hundreds of videos about, honestly. Uh, but the problem is that it never stays the same. For, for the game anyway, for the community it stays the same. The people who loved how to, you know, loved the wall bounds in Gears 2 and Gears 3, that perfected it, they still love that stuff today and they're still looking for that edge, right? That, that, that feeling of, of wanting to be the best or the fastest or whatever, well, it doesn't really matter, but that's what they want. And that's the community that TC also has and we also have. And you got the competitive crowd, you know, the people who want to play just escalation or just execution or what have you. But those things are not, you know, they haven't evolved. Escalation has been put in the game, but Escalation 2.0, according to even many of the pros, is just a mess. So uh, before I go, you know, further into uh, anything else, I just want to say, like, the reason I'm so critical now is because I see this as Gears' last shot. The industry today, and many of you that comment negatively on people critiquing the devs, are really unaware of, or at least I assume you're really unaware, of how bad it really is in the games industry right now. With the diabolical state of certain games like Anthem and Fallout 76, like you're talking about that people are considering Gears 5 to be among those, but not in a serious way, but in a funny way that people, you know, they look back at Gears and they think, yeah, Gears 1 and 2 and 3 uh, were the best. But I want that to evolve. I want to evolve from Gears 2 and 3 into something better. But when Gears 4 was released and Gears Ultimate Edition, uh, it already showed signs of just no no risk not the same risk that gears one took with the chainsaw not the same risk that gears one took with the redesign it, it was supposed to be a, a via um, um like a vehicle shooter basically right sort of like uh, a world of tanks i suppose or uh yeah something like that you can you can look it up it's on youtube um, they redesigned the whole game to be around a third person perspective just to be in that visceral, you know, combat, I suppose. And that's what made it so fun. It was just a really great, unreal, uh, arcade, uh, uh, 
um, like arena shooter, right? Like Unreal Tournament. And it didn't need all this fancy rank system here, rank system there, because eventually people would learn how to play. Now, recently, the coalition has come forward, especially Node Zero, and I thank him for his transparency. It's really appreciated, but it shows so many holes in the logic behind the development of Gears uh, or the interpretation of what made Gears great in the first place uh, is that, you know, it is a tough game. It is a niche game. It's always been a niche game, not the, not the campaign, but the multiplayer, whether that's co-op or versus but mostly versus of course because co-op can be you know tuned to your own preferences and versus historically has always just been whoever's been there uh that's who you're up against you know imagine you're a boxer and it's your first time competing you don't know who you're up against so that person could be training for years and that's the first time competing or it they could have just been starting out like you have but naturally be better at it than you right and Gears never shied away from that. Gears was a game that if you really practiced, you could just be better than someone else. And <clears throat> that was really fun back then. But now with Gears 5, the frustrations there that they're catering to people who don't care at all about being good at the game. They don't care about getting better at the game. They don't care about the mechanics of the game. They don't care what the culture is of the game. And look, I said it in the beginning, just like you guys, when I get fed up with something, I'll cuss, I'll shit talk, I'll do whatever it takes to get that off my chest because, hey, that's the way I play my video games, right? And I'm not holding it against anyone to do the same to me. I really don't. It's nothing personal. It's just the way, you know, I've kind of learned to appreciate Gears. It's the only way to deal with it on a daily basis. But recently... Seeing all these comments of people uh, saying like, oh, it's not this bad, it's not that bad. Yeah, maybe for you. But you have to consider that many of us, especially people like me, I'm not saying I'm some snowflake or something, but I've had to look into these things because I want to make good content. I don't want to, to, to constantly hammer the same points over and over, but I will if I have to. And that's why I'm making this video is to just tell you, look, I'm bringing all this up for a reason, okay? TC needs to know that whatever they're doing to their game, people already know what's coming. The people who are educated enough, they, they will damage your reputation. And I'm not talking about the gamers, I'm talking about the industry folks, right? It's, it's not my job to tell the devs what to do, but as a community member, it is my responsibility to be as much or as well educated in the matter as I can be. And I don't get any inside information and all the informa information that I am being told, I am always skeptical about, I'm always critical about. Whether it's community wise, uh, you know, amongst one another, um, or from the developers themselves, because in the, t in the past guys, we've just been burned way too much. And if any of you actually think back to all the shit that's happened, uh, when TC, you know, took the game and don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm grateful we have a game, but at the same time, it's what we paid for. All right. You know, I, am I the only one that thinks it's really stupid to cater to people who don't buy your product? If this is a business, because the way TC handles things, look at the end of the day, when you put it all on paper, they have spent a lot of money creating things that don't really matter. All right. For instance, in the campaign or difficulty options, instead of keeping it casual, uh, experienced, hardcore and insane and stuff, they said they didn't want to uh, pigeonhole people into thinking that they're casual people. So they changed it to beginner. See, when you use that type of language, you're basically telling people that instead of casually playing the game, right, and going through it casually, like a stroll, you're telling those people they have to play on beginner difficulty, even if they're not beginner. And that just shows me that if you make that decision at such a, such a small thing in the game already, then you won't get the big picture. <laughs> That's just my, my view on it. And I'm not in charge. Maybe for good reason, but that is, that is the way I feel about it. And I will express that in any way I see fit. 
Now with my videos of the last couple of weeks with the, um, uh, the WhatsApps and my thoughts on this and my thoughts on that, a lot of you guys don't understand that they're just off the top of my head, right? Non-scripted, not really thought about that much because I just wanted to give you the raw impression that I think you guys have when you first read something, right? It's just your initial reaction, whether it's knee jerk or not. It's just, that's just what I want to put out there. And in the past, I made my scripted videos. And for those of you thinking I'm super toxic, whatever, go back a couple of years because my videos are still there. And look at the videos talking about hashtag make gears great again. You know, I spent a lot of time during those streaming days talking to people about what we could do as a community. But it never came to fruition because people were afraid to confront one another, conf uh, afraid to confront ideas, afraid to really keep the devs accountable um, because they were afraid it was going to cut in their paycheck. But I'm at a point now, guys, and I'm going to really cut it off here. I'm at a point now, guys, that, you know, I work full time. I got other responsibilities that I need to take care of. Um, YouTube as a platform, Twitch as a platform, Twitter as a platform. These these places are becoming more and more uh, uh, hostile to people who are critical about stuff. Whether you are, you know, agreeing or disagreeing, it really doesn't matter. If the wrong person gets, gets any wind of it or the wrong thing happens, you're screwed. Yeah, to give an example, I literally yesterday got an email from a copyright strike from one of my oldest videos uh, that all monetization on the video has been halted because a company called third party ad rev uh, has claimed a copyright strike. Now, someone else is trying to make whatever pennies I make on YouTube theirs by just randomly copyright striking. And I have no way to combat that because I am not some high profile YouTuber. But at the same time, I don't really care. Okay, I'm putting this video and these videos out for you guys that understand the concept or the context of all my videos, the context of my critique, the context of why I do all this um, in the first place. And some of you guys, you get it. And to you, I salute you big time. I really do. Because I feel like we already know each other without ever having to meet. Right. And it's one of the best things about the internet to me. But there's also some of you that no matter how hard I try, to explain things, the truth, whatever, you still don't get it. So I, I, I'm at the point where I just think, just let things be, just let things be. If you want to tell other people they're toxic, that's great. But in, in you doing that, you're being that critical person that I'm being to the developers. You know, I'm making my videos out for the public and I'm not afraid to put my thoughts out there and be criticized for it anymore because I'm at the point where I'm just, I just don't care anymore. Whatever we say, whatever we think, whatever we do, it hasn't mattered since ultimate edition. It didn't matter in gears four because they still made decisions based on other people's feedback that I could never see. All right. Gears four Hammerverse change where they made it overpowered and it lasted like six months. I still played the game. All right. I didn't use the Hammerverse. I didn't turn into one of those people. I didn't turn into one of those, shit players who made other people quit because they constantly ha kept using that gun. In Gears of War 3, I wasn't one of those noobs that sat back with Retro and Sonoff. But I also could understand why someone would, right? Until that game died and everyone started playing ranked with Retros and Sonoffs just to piss people like me off because they knew I was a streamer and such, right? These are real things that you might not deal with, but I have dealt with. And at this point in time in Gears 4, or sorry, Gears 5, this game is a crapshoot for me, all right? The matchmaking in Gears has always been that in Europe. Now it's even worse for me because I am a, you know, quote-unquote top-tier player for ranked. Um, somehow I'm going to have to wait, you know, an hour, hour and a half just to get a game to get in my skill bracket to rank up. And I, <laughs> like... I'm not going to spend that much time doing it. I'm sorry. You know, no matter how much I love gears, I'm not going to do it. The same goes with the co-op stuff, you know, horde. Like I love horde, but the way horde plays now with these randoms everywhere, I get, you can make custom games, but man, 
these people that play the game, they don't they don't even look at the class they play. They don't even look at the abilities that they pick. They don't even look at the the stuff that they do in the game. It's just mind-boggling because back in the other Gears games, that was kind of the rite of passage right there. As soon as you went into a an insane horde or hardcore horde, if you didn't know how to play, you weren't going to have any fun at all. So by the time you got to that difficulty and you met random people, usually they understood like, this is someone I can rely on. And that's all gone. And I want that back. I want that back for myself. I want that back for you guys. I want that back for anyone who will ever touch the game and realize, you know, how special that was. And I know I said I'd cut it, I'd cut it off earlier, but I do want to pay homage to Epic and the old Gears games that despite all its issues, uh, they brought me the best memories that I've ever had in any versus shooter ever. The competitiveness, the trash talking, the camaraderie, like you really could really, really dislike people just because you knew they were really good at the game. Right? And you wanted to beat them so bad, but you couldn't, at least in my case. And as the years went on, you kind of just like, you go through the trials and tribulations of just getting better at something until you realize like when you're good enough, you're good enough. And I wanted to teach. So that's what I started to do. And I got more hate for it than I've ever had before. <laughs> I've also got more praise for it than I've ever had before. But like I said, in a different video, it doesn't really help the game. Right. And I don't want to sound super depressed about this, uh, besides being tired, of course, but it is the reality, guys, that in Gears of War 4, only 0.4% of all people that touch the game reach level 5. Just think about that, okay? Like, this, is, this goes beyond what we say or what some other YouTuber says or someone on Twitter says or gives feedback to the devs, all right? No matter what TC has tried, only that amount of people stayed with the multiplayer. Whether it's co-op or versus, only 0.4% of every Xbox account that's ever touched Gears 4 made level 5. You know how long it takes to make level 5, guys? Two games. Even if you lose, you probably level up to level 5. Even if you spend 10 waves in Horde, you're level 5. Back then. That's absurd. That's really absurd. So, I'm going to leave you guys on that note. Thank you all for watching. If you do really uh, appreciate the content, you know, consider subscribing, leaving a like, turn on the post notifications because YouTube is absolutely garbage at telling you guys when a video is live and anyone. Make sure that you follow all your favorite YouTubers or whatever on Twitter if you have Twitter or Discord if you're on the PC. It's a free program. If you don't have it already, get it, use it. It's one of the best. And if you really want to go that extra mile, guys, consider coming over to Twitch and hit me up with a Twitch sub or something uh, so you can use some cool-ass emotes. Uh, but other than that, man, I really appreciate all the support over the years. I'm super discouraged on making content as a whole just because of all the industry things that are going on. But I will keep going. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care of yourself. Peace out.